Right now, we're gonna cover some of my favorite, classic, consistent 16th note grooves. So here we go. We're gonna start with the Break to Funky Drummer. As I mentioned in Academy Lesson 41, this one has some moving parts and it's quite challenging to get together. So if you can play this one, then you can play a lot of the other 16th note grooves that you're going to encounter. Depending on which two bars are sampled, the hi-hat shoops can happen in different places. So we're gonna start off with the first two bars of this break. Depending on which bar is sampled from the break, you might hear those hi-hat shoops happen in different places. So right now I'm gonna play it as we hear it on the James Brown Funky Drummer Bonus Beat Reprise. To get those shoops in there takes some time and some shedding, so right now, Let's try it without the shoops. This is admittedly a very challenging groove to play. So right now I wanna cover some things that you can do to work this up. And then you can apply some of these techniques to other things that you're working up as well. And you can definitely apply these to some of the other beats within this lesson. I highly recommend slowing things down and shedding to a click. I really like the Benny Grab gap click because with the gaps in there, you challenge yourself and you work on developing your own internal clock. Definitely do practice though to a steady time source because you don't want to inadvertently speed up or slow down. Nobody wants a drummer who speeds up and slows down. If you need to slow these down as slow as 60 beats per minute or even slower, that's okay. Right now we're gonna shed these at 80 beats per minute. We're gonna start off by just playing the 16th notes with the two and four on the snare drum and one on the bass drum, and then we're gonna gradually add notes once this feels comfortable. We're gonna start this off at 80 beats per minute. Now we'll keep that going and we'll add the and of three on the bass drum. Next we'll add the and of one on the bass drum. Next, we'll add the E of four on the bass drum. Now we'll start adding in some of the grace notes on the snare. Some of these E's and O's can be a little challenging, so take the time, practice this slowly, put in the reps, and you wanna work out any of the tremors in the force and just get everything nice and smooth before we start bringing it up to tempo. Next, we'll add in the ah of beat four on the snare. All right, this next part is one of the most challenging aspects of this beat, and that is the ah of beat three right before beat four. This involves a pull out, which means that we're playing a quiet note followed by an accent. So you're gonna play this quiet ghost note and then come up with this accent. This is technically called a pull out and it's very challenging to play.
So pullouts are challenging, especially when you're trying to put them underneath consistent 16th notes. But spend the time with it because if you can do this, you're gonna be able to play just about everything else you want to under consistent 16th notes in your lead hand. And now we can add back in the ah of beat four on the snare. Once you feel comfortable adding all the grace notes and bass drum notes in here, then it's time to start adding in these hi-hat shoops. The shoops happen almost inadvertently, you wanna let them happen instead of making them happen. Don't think so much about playing them or accenting them. What happens is if you're pumping eighth notes with your left heel on the hi-hat, and you can see Bernard Purdy doing this, and then when you're playing the 16th notes, that pumping of the left heel on eighth notes on the hi-hat makes it so that if you just start letting up the pressure just a little bit with your left heel, then the hi-hat opens just a hair, and then those little shoops start to happen on their own. So now, being aware of that, let's try to let these shoops happen and put this into the full picture of Funky Drummer. Once you get all the nuances and details of that beat together at a slower tempo, whether you have to start at 60 beats per minute or slower, you want to stop the metronome and then gradually increase the tempo. You may need to bring it up one BPM, two BPM, maybe five BPM, but bring it up gradually each time you stop the metronome and then work it up to the tempo of the original, but you wanna spend your time working on it, playing it slow, and getting it comfortable before you start increasing that tempo. Just now, we demonstrated it at 80 beats per minute, and then you can go up one or two from there, and then the original is up to 98, but take your time working it up, and make sure you've got everything nice and comfortable before you start increasing that tempo. For a challenge, we're gonna try some variations that are very similar to what Clyde Stubblefield is playing at the end of Funky Drummer. Being able to play accent structures like this is gonna make it so that you can play anything you can think of against these consistent 16th notes. I suggest that you be able to play Funky Drummer and some of these variations against the push pull, the shank tip, and the Tony Deitch hammer, and any other hybrid techniques you might come up with, but be able to play all this against all three of those different techniques, and you're gonna be well on your way to being fluid with consistent 16th notes. These next examples, I suggest starting slow before you bring them up to tempo, but right now we're gonna play them at about where they should be, at about 98 beats per minute. Now we can add some buzzes to that as well. And this one is a little bit of a different variation from the last one, but slight variation with some buzzes. Thank you for checking out this lesson. If you dug it, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also hit that notification bell so you will be notified when I am putting out new lessons. Also, I have a 300 page ebook that I am running a special offer on. And to take advantage of that offer, just click the link in the description. And all of the notation from this lesson is in that ebook, as well as 40 other lessons. And it's a total of over 300 pages. And I'm very proud of it. And it's a lot of the drumming information that I have compiled over my 30 year career in drumming. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it and I'll see y'all down the line.